be with us right now as we enter into your word. Bless everyone listening. Help everybody to understand. Help everyone to see the importance of what we are talking about. Because the time is at hand. And we need to know the scriptures in such a way to bless everyone. So be with us right now as we enter into your word. These verses we ask of you through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay, my dear brethren. This is what we are looking to talk about today. Notice issues and love and the law. Now, why would I put a topic like this? Why would I say something like this? Issues and love and the law. For the simple reason that there's a new concept going around in evangelical circles that tells us that any statement that tells us about loving thy neighbor as thyself is outdated. They're telling us any statement that says loving your neighbor as yourself is outdated. They say Jesus gave us a greater love. And they said the greater love he says is that we love one another as I have loved you. So they are telling us we need to have a higher love. We need to love one another as Jesus loved us. And this is love thy neighbor as I said, they say that was old. And that was the law, the Ten Commandments. In other words, evangelicals attempting to do away with obedience to the law of God have taken Jesus' very words and think they have found a way to get away from love thy neighbor as thyself because it applies to the Ten Commandments. All they have to do is to profess to have a higher love, love one another as Jesus loved us. And they say that is a greater love. So we want to look at issues of love and the law in the Old and the New Testament. Do we have something different or is it all the same being said in different ways? Now it is logical to say, well, all is the same said in different ways. But we want to be able to show it from the scripture, right? Amen. So I provided this chart, I have a next chart also, to help us understand that if you say love one another, if you say love one another as Jesus had loved us, watch me, the phrase love one another is a short phrase from love one another as Jesus had loved us. So if you are saying love one another, you are simply saying in a shortened form of love one another as Jesus had loved us. But we want to show you that the Bible says that is the same as love thy neighbor as thy self. And furthermore, it is all the same as love God and what? This is what we want to look at. We don't just want to say it by a theory. We want to investigate scriptures and see for ourselves for the simple reason that you must be able to show it from the scripture for yourself. Is that understood, my dear brethren? There is a time coming, and in this soon coming time, all of us must be able to give a reason of the faith that is within us. Amen? Amen. You must be able to show why you believe what you believe. And you must be able to show it from the scriptures. As you see in this church, nobody's supposed to be left behind being done with regards to the truth. Because this is supposed to be an educated church. And the way we run our services here, we, we run it as it was done in apostolic time. As Mrs. White says, less sermonizing and more studying of the Bible. What do you say? Okay? We can preach to one another whenever we want, but we need to study our Bible and make sure we individually know those scriptures. Amen? 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 Amen. Um, brother, you can sit on my children. Okay. So, let us look at love thy neighbor as thyself first of all. Okay? Uh, we turn to Leviticus 19, and we look at verse 18, and then we'll read verse 34. Leviticus 19. 
We look at 18 first of all, and then verse 34. Okay? Now you must be able to see it. Let's read Leviticus 19, verse 18. Here is what we are told. I quote, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now clearly that's in the Old Testament. Amen? Amen. So if somebody come and tell you, love is a New Testament thing, they're wrong. Love is eternal. And look, we have been told here, love thy neighbor as thyself. Did you see it? Okay? Now go a little lower down now to verse 34. Is it from? It says, But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. Did you see what's happening there? We are actually being told here the same thing about love the neighbor as yourself. Love him as thyself. Now how do you love somebody as yourself? We are actually being told here in the Old Testament, love your neighbor as yourself. So some people say, in those evangelicals, oh, that's the Old Testament. That's the Ten Commandments. Don't say you need a higher love. They need a greater love than that. Let's look at love one another. John chapter 5 and verse 17. John chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh, John, chapter, John chapter 15, sorry. John chapter 15 and verse 17. John chapter 15 and verse 17. Is it from? We read John chapter 15 and verse 17. Right? You have to read it for yourself in your own Bible, right? Or let your neighbor see what if they don't have one. Help your neighbor find it if they don't have it, right? These things I command you that you what? Love one another. Did you see that? That you what? Love one another. So here Jesus is saying, I command you that you what? Love one another. Now in the Old Testament it says, love thy neighbor as thy self. In the New Testament Jesus says, love one another. Now turn to chapter 13. Chapter 13. John chapter 13. We will read Verse 34. And verse 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Did you see that, my dear brethren? Right, so this is the verse, one of the verses that I use. They say that Jesus Christ gave us a new commandment, and we are supposed to love one another as he loved us. And they say that is not the same as loving the neighbor as yourself. That's the new concept going around among evangelicals. So you now must be able to take your Bible and show them the facts, okay? One fact you know here as you just read, let's read it again. Verse 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So we know one thing for sure. Love one another as Jesus loved us, 
is the same as saying what? Love, love one another. Did you see that? Did you see that? So once you say love one another, you are actually just saying in a short form, love one another as Jesus loved us. You get up there, right? Right, so the phrase love one another and love one another as Jesus loved us means the same. You get up there, okay? We put that out of the way, okay? Now, let's look again at John chapter 15 and verse 12. John chapter 15 and verse 12. You read. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have what? Loved you. Did you see that? Verse 13. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. Did you see it now? So they are telling us that we love one another as Jesus loves us is the greater love. Now it really sounds logical, isn't it? But, but, but stop and think a while. If love one another, if, if love your neighbor as yourself is the Ten Commandments, and if Jesus would give us a greater love, love one another as he loved us, then it would need to say the love of the Ten Commandments is law. Then the love of the Ten Commandments is law. It will mean that Jesus has something higher than the Ten Commandments. Isn't that not so? So it will mean to say when God judges us, if he's judging you by something that is a lower love, and you have a higher love, it means to say God's standard is too low for you. Because he's judging you by something what? Lower when you have a what? A higher love. Is that understood? Now, if you work out the consequences, it's madness to say what they are saying. Is that understood, my dear brethren? Yeah. Right. Yes, my dear. Um, the church I used to go to, right? They yeah. used to, before I just started to come here, most of the members kept telling me, love is the fulfilling of the law, and Christ fulfilled the law. So the new commandments he gave us now is to love thy neighbor as thyself. And as he said, that is the greater commandment. What would you say to address that? Because when I just came here, I didn't know much to address that particular point. Yes, yeah, some of them do say that, but that is outdated in the basic argument. Because as we continue, your question will be answered. Because the next stage we want to look at, watch me now. Watch this now. Watch what I'm going to show you here now. And find Romans chapter 13. Right? Now watch me here now. Watch each other the board. Remember what? Love one another is a shortened form of what? Love, love one another as Jesus loved us. Remember that, right? So if you're saying love one another, and if you're saying love one another as Jesus loved us, you're saying the same thing. Now your Bible will show you love one another is the same as love your neighbor as yourself. That should show you something already. Let me put an arrow here. Watch this again, watch this again. If love one another is a shortened form of love one another as Jesus loved us, amen? If your Bible show you love one another is the same as love your neighbor as yourself, it would mean to say loving your neighbor as yourself is not outdated. It's just another way of saying love one another as what? Jesus loved us. But it follows that we have to find out what it means to love somebody as Jesus loves you. We still have to find out, okay? But yeah. so we're just looking at connections. Yes, brother. I just want to ask something. Um, would you would you think that the reason why they could um, come up with an idea like that is because of the definition of the word new in the verse? When he says, a new commandment I give unto you, and since we have kindness and news, and kindness is regard to superior or quality, 
Do you think based upon that idea they come up with something like that? Yes, yeah, that's part of it. That's part of it. But, but you have people fishing to get away from obedience in the commandments of God. So they will see if any scripture that seems to imply they can get away. This Christ says, greater love. Love one another as I have loved you. They'll try to get away. Because if you now, as a two year and seven year, then this one shows what love. The Old Testament says, love your neighbor as yourself. And that is the Ten Commandments. You have to keep that. They will come and say, well, no, no, no. We don't have to keep the law. Love. Jesus gave us a greater love. Mm -hmm. Love one another as he loved us. Mm -hmm. That's what they are saying. That is their basic argument. So that's why I wrote them all down and showed it's the same thing. Right? But love one another is a shortened form, as I just showed you, of saying what? Love one another as well. Jesus loved us. Now we are going to show you the same love one another is the same thing as love God. This is what we want to show you. In scripture. So if somebody come and tell you, love one another as Jesus loves you, you say, well, yes. That is shortened as love one another. But it is not again love thy neighbor as I said. They mean the same. Now let's see the same. In Romans chapter 13. Yes, my dear. Bible, first, to make something about them, first, love one another as Jesus loved us. You want another day, what are you classifying one another as a neighbor? Sister, little love that neighbor, as I said. Amen. As I have loved you, that's the point. Now let's clearly love one another. You found it, right? Yes. Let's see what they love one another. Now watch me again. Love one another is a shortened form. See, I'm repeating myself over and over, right? Because you need to have the taught connection, right? Remember, love one another is a shortened form of what? Love one another as Jesus loved us. Get that clear, right? So it is not different. The two are there, same. They just say one in a shorter form. Now we want to look and see the love one another is the same as what? Love thy neighbor and thyself in the Old Testament. Amen. 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 Now let's read. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to verse 10. Have you found it? Oh no man anything but what? To love one another. There's his phrase again. What does it say? Love one another. Did you see that? It goes on. For he that loveth another at what? For this. Thou shalt not what? Come into adultery. Thou shalt not what? Kill. Thou shalt not what? Steal. Thou shalt not what? Bear false witness. Thou shalt not what? Covet. And what else? If there be any other commandment, it is briefly what? Comprehended in this same every word. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Did you see it? Amen. Then love will get no one. Love is the one. So you get that clear. In other words, this is New Testament doctrine. This is if you want to say you're a New Testament person. The New Testament tells us love one another is the same as what? Love one another as what? Jesus loved us. And it tells us that that same love one another is the same as what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. And it tells us it's fulfilling the law. Amen. Amen. So instead of somebody trying to get away from obedience to the law, I tell you, greater love, love what Jesus loved. We say, Jesus loves you with the Ten Commandments. Amen. Amen, brethren? Amen. Did you see how simple it is? Amen. Right, but you must get the scriptures and get the facts. You've got no bumbling and no mistake in here when it comes to dealing with these people, okay? Amen. Now, why did God have all these different sh shapes and forms? We'll come to this major one now. Why did God have all these different shapes and forms? Then God just to say, amen? amen? People think about all kinds of things, but they need to think about love, amen? amen? And they need to think about what it means to love, amen? amen. Because people think about different things, but when you think a lot about what it means to love, it helps you. What do you see? That is the reason why I have the brother say that is love me. Amen, Amen brethren? Amen. Right. Now. Your Honor? Yes. Your Honor, you know the real thing is what 
the squares for new one, five squares for the then take no body, then take no body, wipe out, and cause and then come out of the building, and kill it, and steal, you know, with a deal of the savior. Now I didn't break the law, but it's up to the law. The people hold him as the man, the people hold him as and who are you, and you love one another. Amen. So now, let's just look at a phrase here we just read, the very last phrase of Romans 13. Verse 8 to verse 10, the very last phrase. Let's read verse 10 again. Love worketh no end to his neighbor, therefore what? Therefore what? Love is the of the Lord. Right, so watch me now. We want to get back to all of this. Watch the point carefully now. Love one another is a shortened form of saying what? Love, love one another as what? Jesus loved us. us. And love one another is the same as saying what? Love thy neighbor as thyself. And we are, tell, we are told when you say, love thy neighbor as thyself, you are fulfilling the law. Amen. So we need to ask, what does it mean to fulfill the law? In other words, if we find out what it means to fulfill the law, we find out what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? All right, remember, right? Love working no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is he what? Fulfilling the law of the Lord. And this is he loved thy neighbor as thyself. If we can find what love thy neighbor as thyself is, we are told it is fulfilling the law. Amen. Let us find out what fulfilling the law is. And then we can find out what it means to love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. Yes, my dear sister. Yes. shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
but whosoever shall what? Do and teach them, the, the same shall be what? Great in the, in the kingdom of heaven. So we already understand to fulfill the law is to do and to what? Teach it. Amen, brother? Right. Watch what I'm writing here. Did you see that, my dear brethren? Now watch something. Notice, love thy neighbor as thyself. Right? It's fulfilling the law. When you fulfill the law, it means you're doing what? Doing the law and what? Teaching the law. Now watch the thing here now. Watch it here now. Love one another is a shortened form of love one another as Jesus loved us. Love one another is the same as love thy neighbor as thy self. That would mean it is the same as love one another as Jesus loved us. Amen? Amen. Let me repeat again. Watch, follow the, the connection in your mind. Watch. Love one another is a shortened form of love one another as Jesus loved us. If you say this one, you are saying what? This second one. Same thing, okay? Amen. You got that clear, right? Amen. And that same love one another is love thy neighbor as thy self. You got that clear? So love thy neighbor as thyself literally is, in fact, fulfilling the law. And fulfilling the law is what? Doing and teaching it. In other words, it means you love your neighbor as yourself when you work. Do the law and teach it. Amen. Amen. You got it clear? Amen. You got it clear? No big mystery. When you do the law and you teach it, you are loving your neighbor as yourself. Did you see that, my dear brother? Or fulfilling the law. Amen. You got that clear, right? Do you understand that? Amen. Amen. Let me before you go on, right? Yes. Now, when I say something that is very ridiculous, but I say it nevertheless, right? Yes. And I want to know if it's, if it's something in the translation that is so, right? Or what, right? Now, I, I don't believe that, right? Because the Bible is clear as to the ones who will go in the kingdom and the ones who will be out of the kingdom, right? Mm -hmm. But the verse here where it says, least in the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. When you look up the Greek word here, you know the idea you get, I don't know if it's with the translation or what, but what you could say on that? Because a person told me at one time that they will all be in the kingdom, but just one will be least and one will be great. You know that's the difference. I thought you understand. But what I'm asking, is there something wrong with this translation or with regards to release? Well, there's nothing very wrong with the translation. It just means least in the estimation of the kingdom of heaven. Right. So remember, when you say the kingdom of heaven, you're not dealing with that building that takes. Mm -hmm. So when you say kingdom of heaven, in other words, those in the kingdom, in their estimation, mm -hmm. the person will be least in the estimation of those people that make up the kingdom of heaven. Right. But those people that make up the kingdom of heaven will not have a brother or a sister or any one of them who is in the same kingdom of heaven at least. To them, the least is only those who are what? Outside of the kingdom of heaven. Those that are lost. So in other words, in the estimation of the kingdom of heaven, those that are least are those that are lost. Amen? So it's just a way to make a thing. Right. Right. Now, let's get back now. Let me repeat again what we just said, because I want to bring back the connection now. Right? We want to bring back the connection now. Watch this again, and I'm asking for full attention here. Remember what we just showed. Love one another is a shortened form of love, love one another as Jesus loves us. If they say one, you say the other. Okay? Amen? Amen. And we found out that love one another is love thy neighbor as thy self. Amen, Amen brethren? Amen. Which is fulfilling the law. And fulfilling the law is what? Doing and teaching. So a person who is doing and teaching the law, he is loving his neighbor as his self. Now all that will come back in a short while as we look to see what it is to love as Jesus loved us. Coming back to that. Right? Remember what we just saw, I do and teach, right? Now, we have found out that one, two, three is the same. One is a shortened form, one is a longer form, 
and this is the same as this one. You get that clear, right? Where does the last one sit? Where does the last one sit? That's what we need to find out. If we can find where the last one sit, we can see if all of them are in one. First John chapter 5. Is it found? First John chapter 5, 2 and 3. Don't cut this hole yet. Yeah. Uh, see, something not coming. Just hold it right. Now you're ready to read now? Let's read now. Follow. By this we know we love the children of God. That is love for now. That is love thy neighbor. Remember Jesus showed who is the neighbor. Right? Okay? Yes. By this we know we love what? Children. The children of God. Go ahead. When we love God and keep his commandments. When we what? Love, love God and keep his commandments. Why? The next verse tells us. What does it say? For this, For this is the love of God. What? That we keep his commandments. And to the evangelical now. Commandment. This is the commandment. 
you know, and I will tell, tell and some guy, and the guy believe it, and he, and he gave back to God. He said, I have no love at all. And I don't give people a thought. Then after all, the Hindus, you know, the Hindus say, forget about, forget about all your things, let's focus on ourselves. Come on, you know, in the woods, I have to come out there, and you find, 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 find yourself. And after you become a God. You know, so the young guy, they call the Asian, they just show you ethics. And after that, they do all sorts of works. But the young guy, and I did. Because they think that retribution, but you have to go out here and I did. So the other thing is, ethics and, ethics and works in making no good sense. But we still destroy it if we do, you can't have anything as well. Amen, amen, amen. Right, now you're ready to advance. Are you ready to go forward now? Yes. Right, now let's just go forward a bit here. Send to First John chapter 2. Now we can understand what John said here in First John chapter 2. We will look at verse 8 to verse 10. Now you can understand. Right? First John chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 10. Is it found? Ready? We go. But just for troubling the brain a bit, let's go to the seven. Right? Just trouble the brain a bit. Let's go to the seven. Start the cover. Verse seven. Brethren, John speaking. I write no new commandment unto you. <coughs> Did you see it? Yes. But an old commandment which you have heard from the beginning. <clears throat> Did you hear that? He said, brother, look, I'm not writing any new commandment of you. I'm writing you an old commandment that you heard from the what? Beginning. Let's go on. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Stop right here. What? In the Old Testament was called the word. He said the old commandment, I can write it as an old commandment. That's something that you heard from the beginning. And that old commandment is the word. That's it. Let's read on. Verse 8. Again, a new commandment. I write unto you which thing is true in him and in you. Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that said he is in the light and hated his brother is in darkness even until now. Did you see that? He that what? Loving his brother abided in the light, and there's no one occasion of stumbling in him. Stop there. Did you see that? So we are actually being told here, loving your brother is the new commandment he writes, which he says not the new one, but an old one. In other words, the old commandment, which is restated on you, is simply love your brother. Now, love your brother is the same as love one, one another. Is that understood? Or love thy one, neighbor. Is that understood, my dear brother? No, we are being be told that is the old. But we are being told, yet it is the new. And it's supposed to be true in you. That means it's supposed to be your experience. Amen, brother? Is that what we are being told? Yes, we are being told that. But we ask ourselves the question, what is this word? Yeah. What is this word? The Ten Commandments was called the Word of God, or the Words of God. Thy words have I hid me, that I might not work. Remember we did that, right? Okay? And that was the same Ten Commandments. Because all those truths you learn supposed to plant the law where? In your heart. Is that understood? 
protein. All right? Because I already said verse 5. I'll read verse 5, but although I'm reading it a bit too early. But I'll read it every day. Let's read verse 5. But whoso keepeth what? His word in him verily is what? The love of God what? Perfected. Yeah, I know we that we are in him. Now that is a very true statement. But to understand it, unravel it in connection with the other, that will come later. That later down the line of the one is which will come to in a short while. So the word in the Old Testament is really the words of God. That is really the Ten Commandments, okay? Yeah. All right, because in your Bible, in your Bible, Exodus 34, 28, call the Ten Commandments God's word. All right, they call it that. Exodus 34, 28, calls the Ten Commandments God's word. And Deuteronomy 10, 4 has the same thing, but it is, it's not in the translation, but the translation in words. All right, so let's, let's, let's just look at Exodus 34, 28. Exodus 34, 20. Mm -hmm. It says this. And he was there with Yahweh 40 days and 40 nights. He did neither eat bread nor drink what? Water. Uh, that is a miracle in itself. Drink, no drinking, no water for 40 days. Mm. And Moses is in, is in the presence of God and drink no water for 40 days. Eat no food for 40 days. That will cause somebody to die a long, long time, okay? Yes. Right? You wouldn't have to take a little thing in the night like somebody was fasting by the street side for some road to stop or something. So. Right. It goes on. And he wrote upon the tables what? The words of the covenant, what? The Ten Commandments. Right, you see, this, this, this is really the word that you heard from the beginning. It was the Ten Commandments that was heard from the beginning. All right? Now, here is it. So John is saying, I'm not writing something new. It's already there in that same Ten Commandments. If you look in the Ten Commandments, you will find love one another, love one another as Jesus loved us, love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, my dear, but which we from what to do and we used to do and teach you love. When you do and teach you love, you're loving your neighbor as yourself. Okay? Now, let's look at something here. For the evangelical, yes. Exodus 21, the Lord started saying, what's the one you do and say? There are many of them, right? Okay? Now, let's just stop right here now. Here is the point I'm giving you. All over the Old Testament, where did I say? All over the Old Testament. Is the biblical concept of the highest love. Love God and keep His commandments, which is the summary of all those others. That's all over the Old Testament. Yes. So, somebody who comes to tell you they have something higher, Hey, that's in the old and in the new. So what was abolished in the old? Symbols. That's all, symbols. And the seventh day Sabbath is not a symbol. It is an experience. Amen, brethren? Amen. The Lord's day or Yahweh's day is an experience. Don't boil it down to a symbol. While it has a lot of symbolism behind it, it is still an experience. Is that understood? Yeah, yeah. All right? So the point about it is this. Let's just look at a couple of scriptures. I'm going to just um, quote a few, right? I have a whole set of them down here. Let me just quote a few. Deuteronomy 10. 12 and 13. Deuteronomy 10. And 13. Is this one? Let's go on. And now, Israel, what does Yahweh thy God require of thee 
but to fear Yahweh thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to what? He to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his what? Statutes, which I what? Command thee this day for thy good. So here you have in the First Testament, or in the Old Testament, it is still love God and keep what? His commandments. Amen, brethren? We see no different. Let's look for our next one. Joshua 22. Look after Deuteronomy. Joshua 22. Verse 5. Then I will turn in 6 from verse 4 to 10 and show that the law is good. I'm supposed to teach it. Amen, amen. Also, chapter 4. Turn in chapter 4. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 4. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 4. Okay. Joshua 22. Is it found? Verse 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of Yahweh, charged you. What? To love Yahweh and walk in what? All his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and the servant with all your heart and with all your work. So, so if somebody thinks Joshua is a military genius in his days, a top military man, he himself is still telling us, look, uh, the love God and keep his commandments. Yeah. A military commander, all in 13 something, fighting the Canaanites and so on, with many strength, is telling us, love God and what? Keep his commandments. And that is the summary of the whole thing. Amen. Is that on this, sir? Let's go on a little further. Yes. Yes. Beautiful connection. Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1 5. <clears throat> I mean, look here, look, I'm telling you, it's all over, huh? Yes, sir. Said in different ways, same thing. Everybody will find it in their own up there. Is it found? Nehemiah 1. Verse 5. We read from it says, And said, I beseech thee, O Yahweh God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that what? Love him and what? Observe his commandments. See it once again. Did you see it there again? Do you know what the great prophet Daniel showed the same thing to? Prophet yeah. Daniel 9. Daniel 9. I know you're doing some searching and that is good. Daniel 9. And verse 4. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 4. We read. And I prayed unto Yahweh my God and made my confession and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, keep in the covenant and mercy to them that what? Love him and to them that what? Keep his commandment. There it is again. What is what 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 then do we find out here? We find out that all through the Old Testament we have one concept. And what is that concept? The concept is the fullest way of keeping the law of God. And that fullest way is what? Love of God. See that? So don't let anybody make you have a cross and dry idea of you. See that Old Testament? Old covenant. Black. No, my dear brethren. It's the same philosophy. You have to what? Love God and what? Keep his commandments. Amen, brethren? 
right? So we know that it, 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 it is a old and yet it is a new, right? It is old and yet it, it is new. Now we come to the, the scripture that the sister gave us there, which is Matthew 22. But I'm giving it to you from Mark 12. Because I like how it is written here. Mark 12. Now we come to this one. 28 to 33. Mark 12. 28 to 33. You've got to read this one. Mark 12. 28. No, and then let's just do this and let's quickly go down how we probably have to love one another as she does love. Right? Let us quickly get to that one. Up. And you know that you know you will shock if you see? The phrase love one another as she does love, you'll see it is explained in the Old Testament. Is that lovely? Yeah. So the greater that Jesus spoke about is the same love. Amen? Amen? And it is called greater because you have an individual expressing it. You understand? Because people just talk. But when you see somebody do it, that is greater. Amen? Amen. So if, if you're already doing and teaching, you're already, you're already the greater. Yes. Amen? Right, but now, Watch this beautiful one now. You will see as you read here that Jesus himself said that the whole Ten Commandments was love God, what? Was love God and love your neighbor. That was the whole Ten Commandments. All right? Now after I read that here, I want you to just give me a little moment while I draw a chart here. When I draw this chart, you can join them while I'm drawing them. When I draw this chart here, you can finish now by coming to the point. Amen. Okay? But let's just read this one first. Watch this one now. Mark 12. From verse 35. From verse 28. From verse 28. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reason together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, ask him, which is the first commandment of all? Now just stop right here. Let me just tell you something. What was a scrap? In those days, we didn't have printed press. Every single word of the Old Testament was meticulously written down. They used to put two figures, so one on that word, one on that word, one on that next word. Write that next word, write the next word. Make sure you too much. In other words, it took, it was painstaking. And it took years. Right? He was a scribe, he was scribing it. And not just only that. They must make sure they don't even make a mistake. When it is a little hyphen like this, they must even make a mistake. Some say, they say diacritical dots. They don't give themselves this diacritical dots at all. They must make sure you don't even make a mistake there. If it's for us, make sure it's going for us. But when a scribe doing that, remember he would read the verse, then he would take two words, or two letters, then the next two letters, then the next two letters. So after a while, they came to know what the Old Testament was saying. So they were like scholars then, because they knew every line, everything. So a scribe was like a great person there. And they were like what you call a doctor of divine law, as he used to call it. Call it. They were so great. Doctors of divine writings. That's how it was today. So now, this one, see Jesus having a battle with them, and see Jesus answer them good. He came up with a concept that was among the Pharisees of the time. There's some law greater, and there's some law lesser. <laughs> did somebody tell you, some, did somebody say that? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Yes, come on up, wake up. <laughs> Listen, they came up with something. It's a law greater and it's a law lesser. 
except for the righteousness and see the righteousness of the and Pharisees. Amen. So you hear them. You go and meet a scribe. Scribe, what is the first commandment of all here? Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our God, is born Yahweh. And he stopped it. That's what he would say. He said that was the first of all. So that concept was there. A Jew will just go and profess, Yahweh is the only one, and he feels good. Because he thinks he did the first thing of all. He is in the greatest commandment, the other second. You know? And he would feel good. So he ain't Jesus battling with them now. To him, something was wrong with that idea, but he didn't know. Perhaps it could be right, perhaps it could be wrong. So he came now, and with all those false knowledge and a little conviction mingling up in his head, he tells Jesus, let's hear what he tells Jesus. Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him. Notice that Jesus now began to give him life because Jesus saw a measure of sincerity there that you could go for. And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our God is what? What is Yahweh? Did he stop there? No. no. What did he continue? And. Did he hear what he said? And what? Thou shalt love Yahweh thy God with what? All thy heart. With what? All thy soul. And with what? All thy mind. And with what? All thy strength. This is the first commandment. So the man reeled back now. But when he hear that, he suddenly see love for the one Yahweh. That is the greatest commandment. But Jesus didn't just stop there. Jesus went further on. Because when Jesus said second, second doesn't mean second lesson. Right? This God was a second complete. Not second less. You understand what I'm saying? Watch this. Let's read it. So Jesus continued. And the second is like the only fifth. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other what? Greater than these. You didn't just catch it. Then Jesus said there is none other commandments plural. What did he say? There is none other what? Commandment singular. That what? These. So to, to Jesus, love God and love the neighbor was one commandment. One commandment. But you see, second doesn't mean second less, but second following. Because if you don't love God, you can't what? Love your fellow man. So love your fellow man is not second less, but second following. Amen? Or if, if you want to use a little topic, it is subjunct subjunctive to denominate it. Denominative is love God. Subjunctive, so that you will love it. Amen. Amen. See it? Yes, okay? Yes, but watch. Here, here's the guy's here's the guy's statement now. He goes on. And the spirit said unto him, Well, Master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God. And there is none other but he. And to love him with all thine heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love thy neighbor as thyself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Amen. Amen. When Jesus said, you know, Jesus said, you know what? You are not far from the kingdom of God. <laughs> You're close by. You're, 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 you're almost up. You're almost there. Right now, I, 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 I want to stop now and make a chart. All right. And this chart that I want to make, you can draw it. Can draw it. Now, as we quote that statement, notice I haven't explained anything about it as yet. We just give it. We say that Jesus. You saw that Jesus said, "Love God." 
and love your neighbor as yourself, no other commandment, say, no other what? Commandment greater than these. Right? So the second of it is not like one greater than the other. Second is just what follows. What is subjunctive? Subjunctive. Now, watch this now. I chat. One more thing I've written down there, which we have de dealt with here. Love him one another, as Jesus and love him. Right, so what did he try to tell you? You observe what you just said. You read, keeping the whole Ten Commandments is what? Love to God and what? Love to thy neighbor. When you do that, you keep it all the what? Ten Commandments. That is the same as simply saying what? Love one another. It is the same as saying what? Loving one another as what? Jesus has loved us. One more key arrow here. Well, finally, loving one another as Jesus loved us. Loving one another. A short of what? Loving one another as what? Jesus loved us. And you'll observe the law, salvific love. So Jesus loved us for salvation. So if you have to love your neighbor as Jesus loved you, you have to give them a word. Salvation of love. Now I'm going to replace the arrow I removed. Our charts are now complete. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. Do and what? Teach, Teach the law. law. Remember, we wanted to find out love thy neighbor as thyself is fulfilling the law, right? We wanted to find out what was fulfilling the law. Yeah. Fulfilling the law was what? Doing yeah. and teaching it. Okay? So if you do and teach the law, you're fulfilling the law, which is loving the neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Did you see that, my dear brother? Okay? 
the what? Love to God and love it that love to your neighbor as thyself, that's the same one here, is the same as what? Keeping all the commandments, which is loving one another, the short for what? Loving one another as Christ has what? Love us, which is salvific love or salvational love. Amen. And you must remember, the colonial salvational love is your what? You do and what? And teach the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now let's come to the point and finish it. Yes, sir. Loving one another and love one another as Christ has loved us is salvific love. Yes. Um, this week I met a friend of mine from the past and I'm teaching the gospel, right? Yes. But this boy had me to a, a WhatsApp group where they just be there sharing their normal doctrine, right? I yes. wanted to find out who had me because I don't know this group. So I, I began to take you from our symphony group. I began to take you from our symphony group and post in the group. And I get a favorable response. So I begin to preach to them in the truth. And when I begin to preach to them in the truth, I connect something on sinfulness. And God can beat me to put at the end of this. This is me, or this is my love to you all. When I touch on sinfulness, and you can get this to them, this is my love to you all. And my love to you all is a big love. Amen. And when they saw that, you know, and more of that truth, the whole group now want to meet for Bible study. Amen. 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 Remember we read, greater love has no man than a man laid on his what? Now turn to First John chapter 3. Read verse 16. Ready for this? First John chapter 3 and verse 16. Is it found? First John chapter 3 and verse 16. See, I keep repeating it there. See, I keep repeating it there. I'm repeating it. Okay? My man, greater love has no man than a man laid on his life for his friend. So they want to know what is greater love. Okay, greater love. Let's read it. Hereby yeah, perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down what? Oh, what? Oh, did you see that? We've been told what he did, we have to do. Somebody will say, well, go and die on a cross this morning. No. <laughs> you don't need a copying of symbols of truth. But we are told that same love of Christ laying on his life is for him. You are to do it too. Now, when we read on, and we'll read on, and we'll stop at a certain point here as we are reading on. And when you stop at this point here as you read it on, just look at the board and see which arrow is the one you're reading. Let's read it. That's what I'm explaining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd be over to say that anyway. Sorry. Let's go on up. I'm reading verse 16 again, right? Follow me, right? When I stop, you stop. Let's go. Yeah, I perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. But whoso hath this world's good, and see it his brother have need, and shut it up his bowels of compassion, how dwell the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in what? Word. Neither in what? Talk. But what? Indeed and in truth. Amen. Indeed, do and teach the law. Amen. 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 But yeah, I like what John said. He didn't show the what the bowels of compassion is not the love. But you have bowels of compassion that is supposed to be under the influence of love. Amen. 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 You see a neighbor have me. 
They have bowels of compassion. And they do not help a person they see have a genuine need. But they talk in love. He says, enough talk and enough talk. You understand? You understand? It must be in the deep and according to truth. Amen. 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 Social organizations just do it in deep, but not according to truth. Yes, brother. Yeah. I finish it, right? I know. <coughs> An example of that would be Ezekiel, right? You remember Ezekiel's wife died. And on the day that his wife died, what did what required them to do? To go and what? Teach the Lord. So it was me on the day. On the same day. And the seeker was a priest by the way. And the priest was required to what? Do and teach the Lord. And on the day that his wife died, he was not exempt to go and take care and to go and said, go to him on that day, go and Go and preach. Amen. That's a perfect example of what you just said with the power. Yeah. It has nothing to do with somebody say, but the man loves his wife. So that, what is that example in the Bible showing here? I show here, it clearly shows that the issue is not the power, but the deed and the truth. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. We're supposed to control the power. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we already see do and teach, that's the same thing here, okay? Amen. Now, so you're already understanding what salvation love is. It is the what? Do and teach. Didn't Jesus do that? Yes. Didn't he not live it? Yes. Didn't he not teach it? Yes. Prophecy says he shall magnify the Lord no. and make it what? Well. Do and teach. Amen? Amen? Now I can quote a scripture here for you that you have been quoting for years and years. I didn't see the significance, perhaps, of it. No, First John, chapter four. Yes. 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 Afterwards, sister, I'll take your hand, right? As a quote that scripture, you know what flash on my mind is that some of us look to the powers of compassion to do our work. But look, the Bible says it's not about the powers of compassion. It's not about a feeling, an emotion to drive it to do. But let the intellect subject to the will of God make you know. So what the fashion mind tells is not according to the lower powers, but according to the higher powers, subject to the will of God to govern the lower powers. Let the fashion mind. Amen, amen, amen. This is a... There is none 
good but one that is God. But if thou will enter into life, which is the same question that he asked about eternal life, keep the commandments. But he said unto him, which Jesus said, thou shalt do no more. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Verse 20 says, The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? It brings us back to the last scripture that we were just quoting. You know? We could say that we are doing all this. But do we really have love for God? Mm. Now it's going to tell us, as we go down, where it shows that he had no love for his neighbor. Okay? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And what did he do? But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Okay, so possessions. So this this is the same to me that although he realized and would have practiced to keep some of the law, there was one that was greater that he did not keep, keep and that was love for God and love for his fellow. Yeah. So you look at um, the letter of the judge was a, a works man. He was converted. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he give one, he had, he had plenty riches. He went away sad. He had plenty. Why? If he give a little bit, he'll feel hurt. He give it to me. Then a little boy, he'll feel hurt. That's too much of a great hurt to feel because it's too much here. It's simply being the man was a miser. And Christ was asking him to come up against that. Yes, yeah? right? But we know miserly feelings can be easily dealt with when you abandon what causes the miserliness, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, my dear sister. You know, as you read, um, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. One might ask himself the question, how do we love in deed and in truth? We are to be justified by faith. Amen, <laughs> amen, amen, amen. 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 It's only, only be that way, right? Mm -hmm. So now, let me try to establish a bit of connection again. You need to go to First John chapter 4, where we have been reading a scripture that we are, we are accustomed to. And now you will see the significance of it. We will read from verse 7. We will go down to verse 12. Okay? We read. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that love it is born of God. And what? Knowing God. That's justification by faith. The new boot. It goes on. He that love it not, know it not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us. Because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we, we might what? Live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for what? Our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, in other words, loved us in this way, right? What does it say? We ought also to love one, one another. You see, my dear brethren, you love by giving the Son of God to people for propitiation for their sins. And every time you preach it, you who are you giving? The Son of God. Amen? In other words, you want to know how God loved us? He sent His only Son to be the propitiation and the mercy seat for our sins. This is the way we ought to love one another. Give the Son of God to people. Amen? So when Jesus Himself said, Greater love and no man than a man laid on his life for his friend. Every time you give the Son of God to people, 
you're giving them their life of you're giving them their life of Christ. Amen. You're laying down your life of Christ for them to choose it. Amen. Every time you preach the truth, you're giving the Son of God to people. You're laying down the life of Christ for people to accept it. This is the reason why you must preach Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. And that is great love to people. Now, this clearly shows us here that love is salvific love. Yes. That's a greater love, right? Yes, brother. Love also makes you forgive. Right, but you and I only forgive when God forgives. You can't give, forgive before God. If you forgive before God, you're more righteous than Him. Amen? Remember the world's idea of forgiveness is irresponsibility. Didn't you hear me there? Yes. Remember the world's idea of forgiveness is what? Irresponsibility. Forgive the person without change, without repentance and so on. Remember, only when the person repent and believe, then God does what? Forgive. And you can't forgive a person before God. You are out of time in your forgiveness. Okay? It must come after God forgive. But we're not getting into that now. Yes, my friend. something new. That was done over and over again in the Old Testament. So Jesus was coming with something better in the New Testament than the Old Testament. It was the same thing. He just explained himself. So I'm going to give you two scriptures to show salvation alone in the Old Testament. Two, two scriptures, okay? I see two hands, one in the back and one in the front. Before I give this scripture, let me take one, two, and then three. I will just go back on the text that Brother Medina just read in First John chapter 8. Um, chapter 4, sorry, was it where it says, He that loveth not. Okay, it says in uh, going back on the text that Brother Medina just read. In First John chapter four and verse eight, where it says, "He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love." And then I want to tie it in with First John chapter two and verse three, where, it's, where it says, "And hereby we do know that we know Him if we keep His commandments." Amen. So it's showing here that if we don't know, or if we love it not, we don't know that God is love. So here you now it's showing us there is where we, we will know by keeping his commandments. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes, brother. Um, first of all, the law, first of all, the death of Christ is a tribute. So the law. So give that. Amen. 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 Amen.
a vision of sacredness and, and, and growth, right? She said, if God had, would let his son die rather than abrogate the law, then how very sacred it is to him. Amen. 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 Right. Very good. Well said. Brother Lee. Yeah. That's something we didn't do text. So show the salvific love, right? I love this one very much. Um, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. It says here, Be therefore followers of God, dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has us and have given himself for us and offer it and a sacrifice to God for his sweet smelling savior. Amen. So this is showing salvific love. Amen. Christ has given himself, we have to give ourselves. The born again self. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Nothing else. Amen. Uh, no. Amen. Isaiah 38 17. Isaiah 38, 17. All right, so you see, it's not a new thing. Love him first with the greatest love, which is salvific love. It's the same Ten Commandments. Look at this, look here is the um, salvific love in the Old Testament. Let's look at it. Behold, for peace I had great what? Bitterness. But thou hast a lover to my soul delivered me from the pit of what? Corruption. For thou hast what? Cast all my sins what? Did you see that? Did you see that? So he was suffering, suffering for his sins all the time because he wanted peace. And God gave him the peace. What did God do? Remove his sins from him. What do you say? Cast all his sins here behind his back. This clearly shows us, my dear brethren, here is love, which is salvation. Amen? Amen. Let me give you one more. Isaiah 63 9. Isaiah 63 9. And then one more scripture, and then we are done. Isaiah 63 9. Is it wrong? Yeah. Verse 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence, what? Saved them in his love and in his what? Pity, what? He redeemed them and he what? Dear them and what? Carry them all the days of old. Amen, baby? Then we see again salvation and love. What do you say? So the concept of loving one another as Christ loved us, which is salvation love, is not new. It's an Old Testament teaching. Amen, brethren? But the point is we see the harmony between the two now, right? Amen? When Jesus explained a whole last scripture that we do so. This evangelical used to, used to like to quote for me to do away with the Ten Commandments. But now all I have to do is to read it straight and you will see everything. You know they love Galatians. Galatians. We'll turn to chapter 5, 13 and 14. <laughs> 13 and 14. And we can end by reading the scripture. You will see the rest for yourself. We just got to read it. We read. For, brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty as an occasion to the flesh. But by what? Love. What? Serve one another. Why? For all the Come on, say it. Wait, wait, wait. When they say all, say all with a force. Give a kind of a you know, active speech in it. Alright? For what? All the law. It's what? In 
what that? By the way, did it, were we not told something about wood? Yes. That is word you hold from, you hold from the beginning? Yes. Right? So now we're being told what is the word we heard from the beginning. Amen. What it says here, what? For all the law is fulfilled in one word. What? Even in this. What? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen, brother. Amen. 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 Right. And a little rebuke to, to, to some of us sometimes is the next verse after. It says, But if you bite before one another, take heed that you be not consumed of one another. Amen. 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 But you see it better, all right, my dear brethren? Right, so in a nutshell, it closes. All right? What do we see here? In closing, what do we see here? Watch me again. In closing. Somebody comes and tells you, love thy neighbor as I said, oh, that's Old Testament saying. Christ, you want some better, greater love at no man. That man lay down his life. Sorry. They say, I need a greater love. Giving you the impression that the law could facilitate a lesser and a greater. <coughs> if you're underperforming the law, you're breaking the law. Amen. There is no underperformance that is legitimate. Amen. So you don't have no lesser form of love and greater form of love in the law. Law is law. Love is love. Amen. So watch me now. Then you get it now. Here's the point. In the Bible, love one another is the short for love one another as Jesus loved us. us. Amen, brethren? Amen. Amen, brethren? Amen. And we love one another. We are told in the Bible, it's the same as love thy neighbor as thy self. Put in all those three together as one. And then the Bible come on and tell you, love God and keep his commandments as everything. Yes. Amen, brethren? Amen. So, on this side here now, even all the Ten Commandments, now you could understand what James says. You understand? He called it the law of liberty. If you break one, you're guilty of all. You understand? Love your neighbor as yourself, he called it again. He just used the one word that we ended up with. So we see love to God and love to your neighbor as yourself is even more. All the ten commandments. Which is the same as the short phrase, what? Love one another. And the longer phrase, which is what? Love one another as Jesus loved us. Which is the same as what? Salvation. Amen, brethren? Amen. So they're all the same, okay? Amen. So next time, put the evangelical to flight. What do you see? Amen. Are you saying to them? Yes. Yes. But who can move a whole thing? Right. Now, I'm asking this whole thing. Who can move a whole thing? Right? Now, I'm asking this whole thing. Right? But the importance of this, right? But the issue of the prostitute and Jesus Christ writing in the son, right? And you see the apostates. People are trying to tell Jesus to transfer the wrong word, etc. Every time he evangelizes, he gets the idea that they're going to be Jesus Christ. Right? 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 I think it would be also. So they are both all around our way, so that means they are your boss. Amen, amen, amen. I've been very careful. Go right in the sand for the evangelist. Yes, I'm Peace Virgin. I just want to say thanks to Burmida for this study because this is a very important study. If we see the importance of it, the fact that this concept that there's a higher standard of love than the law is really a doctrine from the devil to push the sun in. Because if there is a higher standard, which is the standard of Jesus Christ, and the Pope is the vicegerent of Jesus Christ, then his standard is above the law. So if he decides to put a standard out there, which we do is the sun in the law, it will be above the law of God. If that's right. Amen. He can change it. Amen. The latest thing is he the papers he put out a document on love to all religions. Yes. It is terrible. Of course, we will all discuss that here next time, right? But it's terrible. Yeah. Rest in peace, you all. Yes. No.
I must confess, I was once a Sunday worshiper. You know, but the word was given to me by my dear sister here. That the Lord said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. No, that is the first step. If you love him, you keep his commandment. You can't say you love God, but you keep nine and you don't keep one. So that's a wrong concept. And then she showed me here in John chapter, chapter uh, first John 1, chapter 2, 3 to 5. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. He that said, I know him, and keep it not his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth the word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. Now, say this to say that. When I see this, it's proof that by keeping the commandment, you love God. And you can't just keep nine and don't keep one. That means you don't love him. If you keep loving, you keep all ten. And when I see that, you know, I have to think and I accept the truth and I know that the Sabbath is to be kept if you want to fulfill the whole thing. Come on. Because the thing again, what I have learned is that if you keep, if you say you're keeping the Sabbath, but you're coveting, you're committing adultery, that means you are not keeping the Sabbath. Because the thing is, the Sabbath is holy, is really high above all of it for me. Right? Yeah, it is. Right? No, it is. Right? But the Sabbath, everything falls in it. Because if you love God, you will not keep it. The Sabbath. If you don't, no, God, because the first commandment says you must love the Lord your God. And the thing is, if you don't keep the Sabbath, that means you don't love. That means you're breaking all the Sabbath. Yeah. The, 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 the commandment. And then I, if you, in John 3 16, you know, we all know it that it said, the word that he gave is only begotten Son. No, the word gave them is very important. For God so loved the word that he like no he said he gave so then we can see that love is really given so if we love god we're going to give everything to him and that's the reason why i'm here today Father, we thank you very much for the wonderful exposition you gave us on your love. We understand that whether you say love one another or love one another as Jesus has loved us or love thy neighbor or love you and keep your commandments, all means the same. We accept this and we submit to this. We ask that we therefore to change us, to justify us, to make us love you and keep your commandments, which is to love one another to love our neighbor as ourselves and to love one another as Jesus loved us. Help us that this may be our existence and that we may keep the seventh day Sabbath in the experience of sinfulness, which is not only love to you, but love to our fellow people. Thank you again for the wonderful exposition you gave to us. And may your great love be in our hearts, right through forever, to Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen.